Hey guys, welcome back. So yesterday we had a chance to pretty much knock out almost all of day two, except for on the back page of day two, after working through all our good stuff here, you know, working through graphs and how we write inequalities to represent graphs, including and problems and or problems, and then working down and solving, we got down to word problems. And so today, I just wanted to take a look at some of our word problems here. We've got number four, five, and six. And again, this is on the back page of day two. So we're going to finish up day two here. And again, I want you to remember our three steps to, to dealing with word problems. Step one, read the last sentence. That's how we're going to get our variable. Step two, find the total. And then step three is going to be all about plugging in numbers that aren't your total and your variable. So last sentence to find the variable, find the total, and then plug in other numbers and the variable on usually on the other side. So let's start with the first one, guys. So we've got a hard drive on a computer that has a capacity of 250 gigabytes. You used 115 of those. So we want to save some home videos on our hard drive. What are the possible sizes of the home video collection you can save? And that right there, possible sizes of the video collection you could save. That's going to be our variable. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's go V for size of video collection. Okay, how about a total? Hey, we have a capacity of 250, don't we? So that's what our max is going to be. Now, how much have we already used? We used 115. So if you take V, the size of our video collection, don't we have to subtract, I'm sorry, what would, what would add up to be all 250 of that gigabytes? I'm sorry. That's going to be V plus, how much have we already used? 115. So our video collection plus the 115 we've already used should add up to be 250 or less. Because remember, that's how much we have capacity for. So we could be equal to that or less than that. We can't go above 250, right? Can't go greater than it, but we could be 250 or less. And so guess what? Now you have an inequality you guys can solve. So now we could subtract 115 from both sides. Boom. And V is less than or equal to. 135. So subtract 115. You find out that your home video collection can be 135 or less. All right. I'm going to let you guys try number five for me. Try number five for me, and then we will see how you guys did. Okay. So I use D to represent the money raised for DECA. Now, we want to raise at least 150. So think about it. If you're trying to raise money, do we want to go less than or equal to 150 or greater than or equal to 150? <laughs> well, duh, if we're raising money at least 150, we want to go greater than or equal to 150. So we want to shoot for that or more. And so on our graph, we know that we're going to have a filled in point. Because we're cool with getting 150. And then we're going to shade to the right. I'm going to shade to the right where all the values are bigger than 150 because that's what we're shooting for. All right, guys. Let's hop on over to the last page we're going to be working on. Let's hop on over to day three. And you're going to see that our topic is going to be all about, ooh, this should look familiar, multi-step. That means more than two. We're going to be solving multi-step inequalities. 
and then dealing with some compound inequalities. Uh, although really, this part is going to come tomorrow on part two. Today is going to be all about part one here on page nine. So let's take a look, guys. We're dealing with solving multi-step inequalities in one variable. Good news is we solve these just like equations, except for one thing. So over here, guys, solve like equations. What is our one difference? What's the one difference? We solve them like equations except for one thing. That's right. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality sign. You've got to flip that thing around. So, for example, if we had uh, negative 2x is less than 4, and you divide by negative 2, you have to flip that sign. And that's because when you divide by a negative, it moves us over to the other side of the number line, whether that's positive or negative. It's moving us to the other side of 0. So let's do a couple of these together, guys. Let's try numbers 1 and 2, or 1 and 3, and today's going to be a pretty heavy practice. So we're going to solve and we're going to graph. Two biggies right here, solve and graph. I'm sorry if you couldn't see that. But uh, here we go. So we have, it got a little spooky in here for a second. But uh, we have x over 2 is less than negative 3. Let's pretend like that's an equal sign, guys. Pretend this is an equation. If x is being divided by 2, and we're trying to get x by itself, don't we need to do the opposite operation? So if it's being divided by 2, we're going to multiply by 2. 2 goes to the top, 2 over 2 cancels, and what you do to the left side, you got to do to the right side. So x is going to be less than negative 3 times 2 is, let's well, negative 6. Okay, so x is less than negative 6. That was pretty short. We got to do our number line here. We got negative 6. Don't forget, the bigger the negative, the smaller its value. So negative 7 is smaller. goes on the left. Negative 5 on the right. We put a dot there. And are we shading left or right? Well, if x is on the left side, we can follow the arrow. And if x is less than negative 6, we're shading to the left. I want to do one more with you guys, and then I'm going to let you guys try a couple. Let's look at number 3 here. Be extra, extra careful. Number 3, we're going to, we have negative 5 times a is greater than or equal to 20. So to solve this, if it's being multiplied, we do the opposite operation. We're going to divide by negative 5. But oof, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip the sign. So we're going to have a is not greater than or equal to, but less than or equal to. 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So you go to graph this. We got negative 4, negative 5, and negative 3. Put down our point at negative 4, and if A is equal to negative 4, if it is, you can put a filled in dot there, and then we're going less than negative 4. Nice. So I'm going to let you guys try. Try numbers 2, 4, and 5 for me, and then we're just going to have a few problems left before we wrap up today. How'd you do, guys? So number two, we multiply by three to get those to cancel. That leaves us with negative one being multiplied to x. So you divide by negative one. Ooh, uh, uh, dividing by a negative. We flip the sign. Boom. So x is less than or equal to negative six. Filled in point, shading to the left. Number four, divide by negative three. Ooh, flip the sign. A is greater than negative one. I chose to write it like this, so we can follow the arrow going to the right. Number five, divide by two. Keep this one nice and simple. X is less than one, so we're shading to the left. Going left towards zero, negative one, and all those good numbers. And so, guys, really, there's just, I would say, one, two, maybe three problems left I want to look at with you guys before I turn you loose. Uh, I want to look at six 8, 
and 9 with you guys. I want to look at 6, 8, and 9 with you. So number 6, I know my guy Blake has been killing these in class. He's been doing great with these in fifth period. Um, and so give a shout out to him. If you have a fraction being multiplied to y, we could either divide by negative 5, 6, or in my opinion, what would be easier is let's multiply by the reciprocal. Flip the fraction. And again, I just moved the negative up top. I know negative 5 goes to the bottom, but that negative could easily move up to the top because it's just the negative that belongs to the number. So those cancel, those cancel. But you also have to multiply this side by negative 6 over 5. And so we do negative 90 times negative 6. Because, again, that number goes to the top. That's we have y is, oh, and wait a minute, did we multiply by a negative number? Yes, we did. I almost made that mistake. We flipped the fraction. We've got 540, oh, 540 over, you can see that there, over 5, and that 100% reduces down to y is greater than or equal to, divide by 5, 108. Very nice. So I'm like, boy, right? <laughs> so we got 108, 109, and 107. Put a point at 108. Is it open or closed? That's right. It's closed because it's equal to, and we're greater than, so we're shading to the right. Hope you guys felt very confident about that one. How about number eight? Check this one out. This is like a vintage equation problem from our delta math and our test. This is a linear distribution problem where we have some parentheses. We're going to multiply 2 to both t and the negative 1. Remember, step 1 is parentheses, so 2t, two, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3t is less than 2. Let me just kind of separate that off. And guys, what would you do next here? What are we thinking? Ah, 2t and 3t. They're on the same side of our sign. We can smash those together. So 2t and positive 3t, that gives us 5t minus 2 is less than 2. And this one looks pretty similar to number 7 now. This is a two-stepper. So we got two steps left. Step one, we're going to move everything away from our variable, including a number that's just chilling by itself. Let's add 2 over. So we got 5t is less than 2 plus 2. Gives you 4. Then divide by 5, and ooh. Are we going to get a fraction here? Yes, we are. And that is A-OK. -okay. We get 4 over 5. And so if you wanted to do a number line, you could put 4 over 5 here, 3 over 5 here. By the way, well, the next one would be 5 over 5. But what's 5 over 5 really? That's right. That's really just 1. We put a point at 4 over 5, and if t is less than 4 over 5, are we shading left or right? You're correct. We're following the arrow. We're going left. Last problem, last problem, before I turn you guys loose, last prob together. Let's go. What a great smiley face. Number nine. Ooh, now no parentheses. We got variables on the opposite sides. And here's what I'm going to stress to you. Try to keep the number with the variable positive. I cannot stress that enough. Try to keep the number with the variable positive because if you end up dividing by a negative number, oh, it's, it's one less, that's one more thing you have to worry about with flipping the sign. So we either need to move that over or move that over. What are you thinking? That's right. Let's bring the 4 in over, subtract it. If you subtracted the 17 over, we'd end up with a negative. So you get 2 is less than 13 in minus 13. And hey... This is a two-stepper just like 7 is. Add the 13 over. 2 plus 13 is 15. And then 13 times in, so we divide by 13. 
fifteen hundred thirteen isn't going to reduce. So I'm thinking we got well fifteen over thirteen is less than n. Or maybe a better way to write that would be n is greater than fifteen over thirteen. I'd say that'd be a be a better way to write that. Okay, guys. I'm going to let you try for homework, or not for homework, I'm sorry, for practice, number 11 and number 12 here. Let's see what you guys can do as we wrap up on these two last problems. <laughs> Check out number 11, guys. We try to work this out. The, the P's end up canceling, 4P and minus 4P. You're left with 3 is greater than 6. Is that true? No, that's not true. This is a no solution. So you know what our graph looks like? It's just an empty number line. There's nothing on it. It's an empty number line here. There's no solution. How about number 12? Because 3 is not greater than 6. Number 12, we work it out. Hey, this is a nice answer. X is less than 16. I wrote that like this. So if X is less than 16, we shade to the left. And it's not equal to, so that is an open circle. So, guys, if you have any questions, please get in touch with me, remind, email, and hopefully I'll be talking to you and seeing you soon. Thank you.